What up, though? Welcome to Gangsta's Paradise. This is where I kick cautionary street tales. Click that subscribe button, click the like button, and click that little bell. That way you can get notifications whenever I drop an episode. Support Gangsta's Paradise by purchasing a Don't Judge Me t-shirt from Teespring. Glad to be back with you guys. Took a family trip for the holiday, but I'm back at it again. It's been a long vacation. I want to thank y'all for joining me. I always appreciate the audience. I like to look at the comments and I see that the Big Ed story sparked a big conversation in the comments section. I want to send a salute to Wise and Blessed, Rick Flames, and Lex Diamonds. I appreciate the conversation in the comments section. I see a lot of guys out there representing Lakewood and I see Jefferson was just doing his thing back in the 70s and 80s. So salute to Jefferson and salute to Lakewood. The OGs came out from that for that one and I appreciate that. Y'all taught me a lot of stuff and gave me some interesting things to think about. You guys know, know the game. You guys know the streets very well. I appreciate that. And of course, this is intervention and prevention. You know, we want to make more executives. We don't want to keep making the next kingpin, the next dope boy. You know, I'm all about having a better community. But I'm really enjoying telling some of these stories. But when I tell these stories, I really want to tell it in a safe way. I don't want to cause no ruckus out there in the streets. You know, I got quite a few phone calls. People listen to a couple of those stories and they, they really get all worked up like it's some type of war going on, but I'm definitely not trying to start any wars or anything like that. This is definitely intervention and prevention. We all went through the war, the wars out there on the streets of Detroit, but it's time for us to control our own narrative. The Kingpin material, I'm not gonna do too much more of that. I think that some of those stories already been told before and I don't want to keep recycling the same stories over and over again. Most of us know those stories. So my focus is not necessarily the popular kingpins. I'm happy to announce a partnership with filmmaker, director and writer Face English. So we will be working on some material soon so be looking for that i'm very excited about that you know start looking for funding you guys want to invest in one of the projects you know you can get up with me send me an email or if you just want to put our heads together and put a good story together i'm all for that shoot me an email i I will get i'll send you a message we can switch contact we can get on the phone we can chop it up put our heads together and come up with something good Gangsta's Paradise has spread around Detroit mighty fast, to my surprise. I've gotten so many phone calls from the city of Detroit. I had a couple of stories in my bag that I knew would wake the city up, or at least wake some folks up in the city. And it definitely did that, so. The Vito story is no longer available. I am recycling that particular story uh it will be coming back soon there's a couple of part twos i got coming so i got a lot of content coming it's going to be good and i appreciate y'all for checking out gangsters paradise which brings me to another urban folk legend or urban folk hero gg ghost rider the 60 year old rider is a shadowy figure in local east side street legend who has successfully reinvented himself into a legitimate businessman and real estate entrepreneur until his arrest. And allegedly, he's a reputed drug dealer. At 60 years old, he's in his 60s right now, so he went through the game in the 70s, he went through the game in the 80s, allegedly. So this is a real OG right here, done seen it all, but he's one of those obscure type of figure. Uh, in the underworld, as they say, a shadowy figure. And some of us, some of us do go away and we do come back reinvented as businessmen, but sometimes we can't leave that street mentality behind, you know. 
not saying that in this particular case, but we do go away and come back reinvented as businessmen, legitimate businessmen. Because when you're in the streets, you sort of, you actually an entrepreneur. You know, you basically run a business if you have a drug organization. So a lot of people have those business skills. Sometimes it, we just got to point it in a legitimate direction. And when you look into this story, it's a lot of twists and turns and a lot of deceit that goes in looking into the story. And I see that it's closely associated with Joe Dodo Foster and the Fine Arts Theater located on Woodward. He was convicted on murder charges that's unrelated to the theater of a woman that lived in Warren. Uh, he's currently serving life in prison. I know he's gonna appeal that case and fight it and try to get out of there. I'm sure he don't wanna spend the rest of his life in prison because he was quite older when catching this case, you know. And generally, the average time to be balling or going hard in the street is about three years. Some people go less, some people go longer. So apparently the Fed's been trying to get to GG or Ghost for decades, but they can never stick them on anything. Dodo, former owner of the Fine Arts Theater, held by some as the Pope of the Cash Corridor and indicted by federal grand jurors as a key player in a well-entrenched dope ring. He was gunned down outside his delicate testing amid rumors he might be ready to cooperate. Yeah, I mean, he was 56 years old when he got gunned down. Uh, he got gunned down in front of FNJ Deli on John R and Adelaide. I mean, you get that old and you catching cases, you know, you don't want to go to jail and spend the rest of the, your life in prison. But at least that's what it say that people were thinking that he was ready to cooperate with authorities. Foster was among 13 people indicted on charges of running a heroin and cocaine ring in the Cass Corridor and Brush Park areas, just north of downtown Detroit. Officials said the ring had been a canker in the neighborhood for years and also dealt in black market food stamps. Yeah, that's one of the charges Dodo had was that food stamp charge but you know, it's like racketeering, you know, all the little scams and all this stuff that go in the game, you know, it's the underworld. You know, when I was out there on the street, people had all kinds of scams going on. You know, I used to be into that stuff. I've never really been into scamming, but it's all a part of the street stuff. So it, one of the charges was this food stamp fraud thing. So a couple of months later, Foster's girlfriend, Bernice Johnson, and an alleged accomplice in Foster's drug trade was found murdered. Yeah, his girlfriend ended up getting murdered. You know, he had uh, her name ended up being on these properties. So it looked like a lot of scandal and, you know, justification started coming up through that area. So certain people wanted that property. I'm not saying that's why he got assassinated or her, but she ended up with the property and she got assassinated. So interesting. Here's another twist in this story because it leads to another woman named Valerie Adakian. She was also found murdered in one of the theater's restaurant restrooms, which means she actually got murdered in the actual theater. She eventually became co-owner of this property, which brings us back to Gigi Ghost Rider, because Ghost was actually dating this woman. Like I said, he did his time in the feds and all that. He caught some fed cases, did some time in the feds. Been around for a long time. The feds been trying to get this guy, um, but they can never get him on something major. But going back to Dodo for a minute, this guy was a hustler right here. Government officials complained describe how, how an undercover Detroit police officer negotiated with Foster. He bought $9,000 worth of heroin from Dodo. Uh, he brought $9,100 worth of food stamps from Dodo. Uh, that's interesting. Yeah, a little hustle going on there. 
and say Dodo put a lot of money into that place. And it's the understanding that he will go out and borrow money from somebody and give them a quick claim deed with some interest in it. And they will leave there thinking that was the only deed that there was. So that was going through a lot of stuff with this theater. But ultimately, the theater was sold in a land contract to a company called TGR Group, which was headed by GG Ghost Rider. Like I said before, he, you know, he came back, reinvented himself. He's a businessman and he invests in properties. Apparently, Dodo had a lot of properties, but some of the stuff was getting sued, um, seized. You know, he was going through a lot of issues or whatever. But, you know, the game is an up and down thing. It's like the stock market, you know. The street game is just an up and down business. It is what it is. You could be super balling one day and be broke the next day. It's just up that up and down like that. You know, you really got to have a pipeline to something to really sustain money over years. Even if you're a legitimate business owner, you know, business be up and down. Sometimes you got to go out there and borrow money, you know, to keep your business alive. And in terms of the woman Valerie murdered in the theater, the police can't find any connection between the deed dispute, dispute that it became or Gigi has something to do with this assassination. Gigi was actually away in the federal penitentiary when this lady was murdered. He was doing time for an early 1990s drug conviction. This woman, Valerie, she owned a boutique in Southfield. It was called Via Bugatti. And she also used to manage boxers in the Detroit area. So she know a little bit about business. She got her connections and, you know, it seems that she was on some shady stuff if you really look at, look at her. So her and Ghost, these two were dating, um, but ultimately he hired her to obtain financing for the theater because now his group actually owned this theater. But it gets to a point where a guy named Yusuf come into place because Valerie brokered a deal for Yusuf to buy this place. Now this where Ghost is getting cut out of, out of the deal because the, the deal she made with Yusuf made her 50% owner of this place for only $1, which Ghost claimed this is a fraud. So after this sale supposedly went down, Ghost went and took out almost a $400,000 mortgage on the place. And they started having this battle over the title of the place. Ryder ended up going back to prison on some unrelated stuff. And this when this woman got murdered in this theater. So you can't associate Ghost with this particular murder. Like I said, uh, people wanted that property, a lot of gentrification coming into play and people think it's foul play and it's not coming from the underworld it's from the people up top at least that's what people think at least that's some of the theories people think this hit came from up top not in the underworld people want that property but this woman right here she was kind of shady herself so but that's happened that happened in you know white collar crime you know that's that's a part of the game make sure y'all subscribe to this channel Click that like button and click that notification bell. This is how you get notifications for whenever I drop an episode. And I want to thank the folks out there in Philly. And I want to thank the folks, the folks in Arizona for checking out Gangsta's Paradise. I really appreciate it. Shouts out to, to the 313 for sure. And Ghost is one of those cases, you know, the feds just want to stick a case on that person. So it's interesting because he ended up getting caught on a murder charge with this woman from Warren. And it seems to be like this love quarrel type of thing where a hitman was hired to go hit this woman because she's dating some guy, some other woman liked it. At least that's the theory. Of course, Ghost is going to dispute any of that. So, you know, this is a, a boss right here. So, 
it wouldn't seem that he get caught up in something as petty as some love quarrel between two other people. At least that's what he would say. I would say that if I'm in that in that position. So, wow, the feds have been itching to stick G.G. Ryder behind bars for the rest of his life for decades. It was state authorities, most likely with prodding from the FBI and U.S. Attorney Office, that finally ac accomplished the feat. Nonetheless, the feds in Detroit are certainly slapping high fives because this guy got arrested and got convicted on his murder charge. So he's currently sitting in prison. Of course, he had caught up in some type of fire charge. He um, beat that charge, but he's in prison right now. I'm sure he's going to appeal that, that guilty plea or that guilty verdict. Um, this is GG Ghost Rider. Subscribe to the channel. Tell a friend. Share this episode. Appreciate it, family. One love.